Jackson and Julie asked her, do you want to talk about what happened at Grandpa's? And she said, Molly just turned her head away and looked at the, at the wall and said, no. Um, and the two never, through a lifetime, never discussed what happened. And she has no idea what happened. I, I reached out to her and arranged for a telephone call. Uh, and she has no idea what happened. Uh, she's had a, a, a lot of what she called funny dreams. Uh, but no idea what happened to her. And her poor sister, they never discussed what happened. Of course, all of the adults and everyone have long since passed away. But, uh, boy, what an opportunity lost that the two of them couldn't connect somehow. Uh, but that's so typical of people. I, I, I hear that all the time in these letters I get from people. Maybe people are scared to it's talk amazing. about it. They're just scared to talk about it sometimes. You know what I think? I, I really think that they can uh, plant like a, in hypnosis, you know, you can plant a, a, a subconscious suggestion. Uh, I think they can program us in a way that we don't want to talk about it or we feel guilty when we talk about it. I know when I went to mm-hmm. see my buddy uh, Tobias for the last time, uh, and we talked about it. I felt guilty about it. I felt inexplicably like I was doing something wrong. Uh, and of course, that makes no sense. But uh, but uh, that's that's the way it was. Well, I think a lot of people, so, you know, Terry. A lot of people think if they talk about it, people still will look at them funny. So they just don't. They hold it in with them. And, you know, I, I've seen it with some of the guests we've had on the show that they, that they, even when they talk about their abduction, they don't go into everything because they're scared to, because they're scared of what's going to happen to them with their family members, what they're going to think of them. It's like they, they feel, how can I say it? They're ashamed of what happened, but they didn't have any, just like you, you had no control of what happened. It just happened to you. Yes. Well, you know, that's, that's funny you use the word shame because that's, that's the emotion that, uh, that I felt was, uh, you know, I, I felt stunned when I, when I, when I uh, brought the topic up and uh, did not want to talk about it. So, but actually when I faced it and talked about it and wrote a book about it, and uh, it, it was very cathartic. Well, you, okay, you were a former United States uh, Attorney General, right? Uh, uh, assistant Attorney as, General. As, as, assistant Attorney General. You also were uh, a, a attorney. Now, there's attorney up here yes. in the Seattle area that has a group about UFOs and stuff like that, and he's noted as the UFO uh, attorney. I, I, did it affect you? I mean, did you, when you were in law, did you ever tell anybody, uh, any of your friends, uh, lawyers, and all this stuff, what happened to you? Uh, or did you hold all this stuff into you for many years? I, uh, my wife and I knew what happened because uh, I was 22 when I was married at the time. We, my wife and I, we've been together 45 years. Um, I, I, I never discussed it with a soul. We never discussed it with our kids. Yeah, they knew Dad would have screaming nightmares once or twice a year. But, uh, no, I never discussed it. And I can tell you, had I had I done that, in the area of law that I practice, you know, as Vermont State's attorney for a while, you know, uh, attorney for their board of medical practice, I, I, I know I would have been out of a job. And, again, I'm not faulting them for saying that, but you're the face of the – you know, you're the face of the government for the public. And, um, you know, they, they want that person to be solid and they want to be able to have confidence in that person as a public servant, you know, there to do the taxpayers' uh, uh, bidding. And uh, it would not have gone over. I, I, I would have been unemployed. And yeah. my standing in the legal community would have been tarnished as well. You know, it's odd. There's so much synchronicity around this stuff. I had never heard of the uh, 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 UFO attorney until today. I had a friend of mine uh, who was visiting me. She's a psychic 
Her name is Roseanne Barone, uh, visiting me from Houston. And she was talking about this show on morning TV where this guy is an attorney and a psychic and talks about UFOs. Is that who you're talking about? Well, there's actually another one. He's not a psychic, but he is an attorney. He was a judge pro tem, a pro tem uh, up here, and uh, he runs a group that they go out and try to prove that UFOs exist, and he's had some strange encounters and stuff like that. So, I mean, again, I have asked him. Wow. You know, I, I, I actually asked him because I actually he had a talk show on my network for a while. And uh, I asked wow. him, I said, did, did it ever affect you in the legal? And he goes, you know what? I didn't care. That's what I remember him saying. He didn't care if, what people thought. Yeah, it didn't yeah. affect his legal uh, uh, profession at all. So, he, you know, hey, yeah, you got to have your own beliefs. And if you if you believe that you've been abducted or you've seen a UFO, I I mean, you know, I guess you could be like a lot of people and hold it in with you for years and years and years. But I tell you, I, the people that have held it in, I can see where it has caused mental anguish with them for, you know, and oh, yeah. damage to them because they're, they and actually I, with some of the people I've interviewed, I can tell that they never advance uh, any further career wise or anything because they were so stressed and probably even ashamed in some cases of their abduction. And, and it, again, like I was saying, you have no control. If you're being abducted, just like if you're walking down the street and somebody abducts you and drags you in the back of a van, you have no control. It's the same now, way if you get have abducted. You ever, have you ever talked to Calvin Parker? Oh, Calvin Parker's been on the, hey, James, hasn't he been on the show about three times? Yeah, at least three, maybe four. Absolutely. Yeah, he's going to be yeah. on the show here in the next couple of weeks again. Well, you know, ask him about how he used to jump from job to job after his event. And sometimes he wouldn't even come back and get a paycheck and move every six months. And finally went out and bought a travel trailer and told the family, we're going to live in this. Um because he was so so traumatized, and uh, well, I, I'll let I'll let Calvin tell the story, but it's it's an interesting story, you know, and it's one that I think that abductees it, it, it resonates with, hmm. because um, you know we do come back from this uh, event harmed. They do they do hurt us uh, in a lot of ways, and uh, if you don't if you don't talk about it and deal with it. I think it has the potential to manifest in unhealthy ways, alcoholism, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of mental health issues, all kinds of things. Uh, I've been fortunate to have the support of, a, of my spouse who has been just, you know, by my side throughout the entire thing. And uh, that's what I credit my, my uh, I won't say success with the encounter, but my survival of the encounter. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people who are scared to tell their spouse that they've been abducted or they think they're being abducted or they have an implant or they even even a lot of people are scared to even say, I saw a UFO. And I, I tell you, it, being in denial is going to do more damage to you than if you sit there and share it. Go get a, a go get a regression. Go whatever it needs. Go to a group of other people that have been claimed that they've been abducted and, and talk about it and get it out. Because if you don't, it, it's going to haunt you. And, and what's really bad is the people that have been abducted more than once or twice. And I, I tell you that it has done a lot of damage. Now I think on the 21st or the 22nd, I have Whitney on the show and you know, I'm going to get into his new book, but I, I, I want to ask him, how it's affected him all these years emotionally. Because I listened to him when my friend was still around, Art Bell. He would be on Art Bell's show yes. quite a bit. And I could hear yeah. I could hear the, the stress in his voice about when he was talking about the things that happened to him. It, it's scary. It is scary. I, uh, I spent, uh, I think I mentioned this before, I spent four days with Whitley at the uh, All Nations uh, uh, Consciousness event in uh, 
Kyle, South Dakota. It's about 30 minutes from Wounded Knee, and it's in the middle of nowhere. And we were we were guests of uh, Chief uh, Chief Dallas Eagle and his his lovely wife Chief Becky Eagle uh, at the All Nations Gathering Place, and uh, spent the night in a uh, with a bunk roll and a TP and uh, got to spend a lot of time talking to Whitley, and uh, he is an amazing man. I'll tell you, I. Uh, uh, came away from it just absolutely blown away. We were traveling to a uh, ceremony. Um, a uh, uh, you, you can ask quickly about this. It was a Sundance ceremony, and uh, there's no photography or recording devices allowed. And we got there, and... Uh, it was it was really amazing. They, they had the drums moving, the drums were beating, and I I I, I just kind of felt myself nodding to the music, and I just curiously I felt my pulse. My pulse was right in line with the drum beat to the second. It was weird. And uh, while the uh, the dancers were out on the field, somebody said, "Look up." And above us was a UFO. Oh, wow. White, white, perfectly circular, right over, right over our heads. Pretty, I mean, pretty high up. Probably, I'm guessing, if it were a big object, maybe 20,000 feet. If it was a smaller object, 10,000 feet. But clearly, clearly, um, a craft of some kind. Yeah. Uh, we all watched it. I know that Whitley saw it, and uh, it it put out like a poof of gas, and then had a orange, uh, like a corona around it, um, and then just popped out of existence. And one of the reasons we were invited to to the uh, reservation was that the UFOs had scared uh, the children and horses and making people nervous. So we were there to try to offer some insight, empathy, and, you know, support. And, uh, yeah, it was an interesting four or five days. But it sounds like it. Hey. Is that a, oh, a I, I mystic, get... I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Well, hey, we need to go yeah. on break. Uh, then when we come back from the break, I want to kind of go over from the start to the finish and get into it a little bit farther about what happened to you. Because we're going to have a lot different yes. listeners tonight because it's a different time of the week. And we we might just go from the beginning for the people who didn't catch it the first time for they understand what all happened to you. So we're going to be back in about two and oh. a half minutes. You're listening to me, Gary, and Terry Lovelace. And somewhere in the background is James Krishbaum. And we'll be back uh, in two and a half minutes, you're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. While looking at this history, I sometimes get a tight when reading all those faith-based books all claim to get it right in volumes of religious texts which have their own agenda there lies a silver thread of truth mixed in with propaganda be careful what you say to those with whom you'll be at odds who've taken on the dogma in the pantheon of gods doesn't matter if you're Christian or if Islam or Hindu Your horizons need to open to a human vessel view The dynamics of change 